old radio in the 60s, more vintage turntables. I prefer repairing old stuff because I can actually fix it. I, like it comes in, it's fixed, I got a happy customer and it's out the door. Repair is in John Fidel's blood. American Electronics is a family owned repair shop in Toronto's West End. John's father, Frank Fidel, started the business in 1973. Back in the 70s and 80s, companies used to have parts counter desks. I used to ride my bicycle to these uh, factories and pick up parts for my father. A lot has changed since then. Parts counters have gone by the wayside, and technology has become more sophisticated and more difficult to repair, but not for the reasons you think. There isn't any reason that the stuff we have today is harder to fix than stuff from 20 years ago. It's really the system that has atrophied. Manufacturers used to sell parts. Over the last 20, 30 years, they've systematically stopped doing that. Hey, I'm Kyle with iFixit, and we're gonna take some stuff apart today. iFixit was Kyle Ween's radical response. It's a website that offers everything most manufacturers won't. Repair guides, tools, and parts. More and more these days, we get products from manufacturers and they don't have a plan for us to be able to maintain it. That's hurting repair shops and fueling our throwaway culture. And it has grave implications for the environment and our wallets. Kyle is part of a growing movement of people pushing back. Right to repair is the idea that if you bought it, you should be able to fix it. But even skilled technicians like John have to go to great lengths to do simple repairs. Once the product becomes out of warranty, we cannot call the manufacturers directly. We are referenced to a third party logistics type companies, just basically warehousing companies. Those companies will sell John an entirely new circuit board for a couple hundred dollars. But often he just needs a tiny component part. I've gotten quotes for boards that are more than three quarters the price of the product. It just, it doesn't make sense. Even when he finds that tiny part, it only introduces a new headache. Uh, the issue becomes then shipping. If I'm ordering from China, I'm waiting two months in order for the little product to arrive at the door, and it's tiny. By then, he's wasted a day and has an angry customer on his hands who doesn't want to pay that much or wait that long. So what do most people do? Buy a new one. The runaround that they put us through is absolutely crazy. And unfortunately, the customer doesn't see that end of it. And there's the board that I need to work on. And the manufacturer is claiming it's not serviceable. Even still, John is busier than ever. Granted, I'm still going strong, but I'm finding it harder and harder day after day. Repair is an integral part of the economy, and increasingly, our small repair shops are withering away. We need to get back to where service and repair is a cornerstone of our local economies. Many products today are specifically built not to last. This planned obsolescence is often called designed for the dump. For example, batteries glued into smartphones, which makes them difficult to replace, or software updates that are incompatible with older devices. We absolutely can make products that last longer if we want to. Right now, the companies are making so much money selling us a new thousand dollar phone every two years uh, that, that they don't really have an incentive. So we have a misalignment between what society needs and what is, what is profitable for some of the largest corporations in the world. Companies argue they are protecting consumers' safety and privacy by restricting who is able to do repairs. And also that by withholding repair information and parts, they are safeguarding their intellectual property rights. All these old devices add up. The Electronic Recycling Association's warehouse in Toronto is always full. This fullness happens every day. We can't uh, get rid of it. Manager Oladayo Adebayo sends out trucks across southern Ontario to collect unwanted electronics. Do clients tell you why they're getting rid of this stuff? Most of the time it's just because uh, they're downsizing or they're trying to bring uh, newer models. 
We tagged along on a day of pickups with truck driver Henry and his assistant David. E-waste is the world's fastest growing waste stream. In 2019 alone, a record 54 million tons of electronic waste was thrown out. Yeah, what's next? 10 computers, two laptops, five monitors, and a few printers. Most of this stuff still works. Yeah. Newer models will be sent to the nonprofit's Calgary headquarters to be repaired and then donated. The rest gets recycled. But the recycling industry cannot keep pace with the world's appetite for electronics. And making all this new tech is what causes the most pollution, waste, and environmental harm. We are literally digging a mountain out of the earth every day to make and feed the beast that is our regular electronic consumption. And as more new things run on software, repair shops and DIY types face a new barrier, digital locks. That's when you can't do a fix without special software. And manufacturers often keep those tools to themselves. And, and the moment that you have copyright control over all of our physical objects, that passes control from the owner, from you, to the manufacturer, and they get to dictate what happens at every step of the way. The right to repair is about giving people more control over the things they already own. With the movement gaining momentum, big tech companies have begun to make some concessions. Apple has launched a DIY repair program. Google and Samsung now sell parts for their phones. Nokia and Microsoft are making more repairable products. But advocates say, in order to fix all our devices, we need to repair the entire system. We have to pass laws to construct the kind of society we want to live in. And at the moment, we're very biased in favor of manufacturers and against local repair options. It's a fundamental human right to have access to the knowledge to how to fix all the things that we depend on for modern life.